we just raise our hand and give God glory this morning for allowing us to be back into his house.
church God is exalted the devil is defeated and we have the victory come on you just sung about it God is exalted 
the devil is defeated and we have the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man. We thankful unto God, man, for his power. Man, I mean, y'all love them old songs, man. Yeah, they just resonate. When we all get together, what a day of rejoicing that will be. As you all know, we just had one of our history days and some of the ones that you've seen on the video. Pastor Whitley, the Bible says we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Brother Lynn, I looked at Pastor Scott. Brother Purcell, Sister Claire Bell, Brother Money. I believe Brother Money had a lot of money, y'all. <laughs> uh, but as I looked at some of those, those patriarchs, Brother Matt, but how many of y'all know, man, they can't crown them until we get there? Hallelujah. So, man, we're grateful. Y'all, let's put our hands together. Man, as one leader said, that we stand on the shoulder of giants. Amen. So we're grateful, man. And, uh, man, it's good to see y'all this morning. Amen, amen. Y'all all looking good. As Pastor Whitley would say, uh, tell your neighbor and say, well, I guess you looking as good as you can look. <laughs> uh, amen, amen. So we're grateful unto God, man. We just have just a, a couple of announcements. On uh, next Sunday, I think it is April the 8th, or October the 8th, rather. April the 8th, or October 8th, I'm sorry. Y'all, where, where am I getting April from here? Uh, but next Sunday, we will be celebrating our pastors. Y'all, let's give it up for our senior pastor. Dr. David Whitley and Sister Beth, and also Brother Kerry and Sister Jess. Uh, Jess is here this morning. Brother Kerry, y'all, he's on a preaching assignment. And uh, so we're going to be praying for him in the service. And also, y'all, we're coming up. We got a reignite uh, revival, two-night revival. Uh, it, it, may, it may be kind of a little bit prone to young adults and, and uh, you know, youth and teenagers, but we want the whole church to be involved. Uh, so we got our uh, the young man that I think he's been here. I can't remember the last time it's been some years. Uh, Pastor Adrian Franklin and uh, my little big cousin, y'all, Mr. Austin Smith, he's going to be with us. Uh, he's no stranger to the house, and uh, we want you to pray and support. Uh, if you can, man, fast, maybe one day or two, maybe a meal. And uh, how many of you know, man, that God is moving in this generation? And uh, so we want to just, of course, as we uh, kind of go into the last quarter of the year and uh, praying that we want to have this service. What we normally would have done is had it in August, but... Uh, uh, during our fall revival, we just kind of shifted places, and Pastor Whitley felt the need to kind of have an emphasis for our young adults and youth there. And uh, so be much in prayer, and uh, don't only don't just be in prayer, be in attendance. Yeah, we need to see your body in the, in the building this morning. Amen. So, And also, we've got uh, two events happening on one day, October the 22nd at 11 a.m. We're going to be having our baby and child dedication. And uh, we've actually got the flyer and also the Google form already uploaded on the Facebook page. And I think we also have a physical copy uh, back in our Welcome Center. And uh, so we want you to go ahead and uh, now don't, well, if you use a physical copy, that's one thing. But if you do it digitized in the Google form, uh, don't put both or two or three, you know, children or whatever, how many you have. Uh, we want you to create a separate submission for them depending on how many you have there. So if you got two children, submit two different forms there. Amen. And, uh, and uh, so also that evening at 6 p.m., we're going to be having our baptism. Amen. Amen. Water baptized. I know we had a district-wide water baptism not too long ago. So um, so we want to just go ahead and have that uh, uh, have that available to those. that, uh, And it's going to be right off the, the brink of our youth revival, Pastor Whitley. And uh, so if those who want to be in attendance and uh, want to participate in our water baptism, the same thing applies. We've got the physical form on the Welcome Center, also a digitized Google form on the Facebook page. And Tuesday night, we got any ballers in here? I'm sorry, not baller, but you know, b-ball baller. Uh, <laughs> not that kind of baller, you know. <laughs> hey Amen. So if y'all are interested, man, in uh, on on Tuesday night from 6:45 to 8:45, uh, Pastor Kerry, he'll be here, uh, or may have, he may have delegated somebody to be here. Uh, yeah, man, I'm just gonna come out, have some good fellowship and some fun. And uh, y'all, listen, I need my body. Now I can still ball. Don't get it twisted on the age. But I need to save some of these limbs, so I ain't, I ain't even hit y'all up yet. Where's, where's Cody and Jacob? Yeah, I ain't even hit y'all, but I'm coming, though, y'all. Yeah, don't forget me, I'm coming. Hey, Amen. So we want to make that available on uh, this upcoming Tuesday night at 6.45 p.m. Uh, and also, uh, right quick, before we go to the Lord in prayer, we have several prayer requests. Uh, we want to lift up Sister uh, Anna Williams. She's uh, the grandmother of Sister Bridget. We also want to lift up Brother Winston Hood. Y'all just give a guy a hand clap of praise. Uh, Brother Winston actually came home, I think it was yesterday. 
And uh, so we're grateful. I had open heart surgery during the course of the week. Pastor Whitley was there. And, uh, man, so we thank God for his faithfulness. He is Jehovah Rapha. And uh, I don't know whether or not Brother Winston may be watching this via live stream, but, man, we're praying for you and uh, celebrating the things that God's done for you, Brother Winston. Also, let's continue to remember Sister Ida. Let's remember Sister, uh, I'm sorry, Brother Lindsey Jacobs. We want to lift him up in prayer continue to pray for him. Brother Thomas Woods, uh, which I didn't realize he was in the hospital, so we want to continue to lift up uh, uh, Brother Thomas before you in prayer. Let's remember Colin Ray Oxendine. Miss Magdalene Stewart, we want to lift up Sister Carolyn, uh, which is Sister Mabel's sister, Mr. Donald Lockelier. We want to, of course, lift up our, our uh, uh, woman of God of the house, uh, Sister Beth, Dr., Dr. Pastor Whitley, his wife. We want to continue to remember her in prayer uh, this morning. We want to lift up Sister Elizabeth Lib Fields. Let's continue to remember, remember Sister Carol Butler and all the new converts, those that have recently given their hearts to the Lord. The chapelship is important. It's key. Community, and uh, see, we want to lift up, uh, you know, those that have recently given their hearts to God and praying for his power, praying for his anointing. And uh, uh, I just want to pray and uh, just continue to lift up, uh, you know, even our church collectively uh, for what may, go, may be going on in our national, local, and state legislation. Uh, so we're just praying for God's power, God's anointing. Uh, right quick before we go to the Lord in the prayer, I was on the phone. Dad called me last night and, uh, you know, we just kind of bull job and pick and play and that type of thing. But uh, I hope they don't mind me at, uh, saying this this morning. But uh, he told me about there was a there was a particular. Now, if anybody you know, but the Elam to the Dealam, you know the man loves trucks. Cars don't matter. Don't matter what it is. So he's in this season of flipping. Bless the Lord, Sister Terry. Yeah? You know, he, he may buy a car, flip it, you know, get a little bit of profit. Uh, but he told me last, I said, Dad, I said, what happened to the, what happened to the truck there? He said, oh, son, that truck gone. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, already. He said, yes, sir. I said, okay, okay. I said, so well, what you do? You post it on Facebook? You part it on the side of the road there, put a set for sale sign? He said, none of that. I said, okay. So what happened? So he told me that uh, he went to Lowe's the, the, in, the, in the course of the week there. Hadn't even put it on Facebook, Brother Rodney. Didn't put it up beside the road for sale. Gentleman came up to him inquiring on the S10. Now, as far as I know, the, the brother didn't even know he had an S10. I'm sorry for all y'all four fans out there. I'm just, you know, just go along with the story here. Uh, so he said, he said, man, do you or Brother Tim know anybody got an S10? He said, I got you, man. I got one. What do I say all that to say this? In the realm of what it is that you're praying and believing God for, I told that after he said, I said, oh, so you were at the right place at the right time. So whatever it is that we're praying for, and sometimes our victory, Pastor Whitley, will be, sweatless. He told the children of Israel, go to the Red Sea. Now look at here, y'all. We look at the Red Sea as being the obstacle. The Red Sea was the path to the Canaan land. So oftentimes when we, if we in the right place at the right time, God can shower down his blessings. You ain't even got to work for it, Brother Rodney. And so whatever it is that you believe in for this morning, healing, provision, relational reconciliation, I believe Pastor Whitley's got a word, and I believe you're in the right place at the right time. And so we just want to celebrate for what God's getting ready to do. Man, sometimes we just come through the house of God passively. Oh, man, they're going to get up, sing two songs, preacher going to get up, do his up. Nah, baby, you, you've lost your anticipation for the move of God. And I believe this is a season, man, where he's getting ready to shower down his blessings. We all going to go ahead and stand. Uh, so, man, if you've got a prayer request by the uplifting of the hand, Pastor Whitley. Pastor Whitley just made me aware. Uh, let's remember Sister Faye Bitten, uh, Brother Bitten, his wife. Uh, uh, very urgent request, and we, we believe him, man, that he is God. Uh, he is Jehovah Rapha. He's the God that heals, that delivers. And uh, so up by the, up the lifting of the hand, there for those that maybe have a, a outspoken there, we want to pray and believe God by faith for our neighbors sitting beside of us. Pastor Kerry told us even Wednesday night, man, we don't know what each other go through during the course of the week. But he's, he's connected us to this spiritual family. What we don't get with our physical family, we get with a spiritual family. Amen. So we want to lift up these prayer requests in prayer. Father, we thank you 
Father, this morning, God, for your power. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you for the power and for, for the privilege. God, I pray. Father, before we ask you, God, for anything, Father, we want to thank you for everything. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you for your gentle, loving kindness. Father, your word says, God, that you have came to the brokenhearted. God, that you have healed them. Father, we lift up every request, God, that's been uplifted and signified by the uplifting of the hand. Father, I pray, God, over Sister Bitten. Father, we pray over this list, God, that we've reached out to Brother Thomas, God, Brother uh, brother Lindsay. Father, we pray, God, over Brother Winston for his recovery. God, all of these names, God, that we have verbalized. Holy Spirit of God, Father, we pray for your power. We pray for your anointing. Holy Spirit of God, deliver us. God, use us, Holy Spirit of God. Father, I pray, God, for every need, God, that's represented to this morning. God, that you would be Jehovah Jireh. God, you are the God that sees. You are the God that provides. Father, be Jehovah Rapha. God, I pray for the healing power of your anointing. God, to be upon every request, God, that's been represented here. God, this morning, Father, we pray over Sister Bitten. God, we pray, God, for a supernatural move of God to be upon her. God, right where it is, God, that we are in real time. God, begin to move upon her body. Begin to move upon her molecular, God, development. Father, I pray for the internal organs, God, to be healed. God, to be delivered. God, to be set free. Father, we pray and we ask you, God, for Pastor Carrie. God, we pray for in his preaching assignment. God, allow souls to be, to be delivered. God, allow souls to come into the kingdom of God. Father, we pray over Pastor Whitley this morning. God, as he preaches, God, articulates the word of God. Father, we pray for your anointing. We pray for power and with demonstration. God, allow our ears, God, to be receptive, God, to the word of God. That it may not only inspire, but lead to a life of transformation. Father, we love you, God. We thank you. We call it done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we praise him one more time in the house of the Lord this morning? It's so good to see all of you with us today at The Rock. If you're visiting with us, all we ask for you to do is take that Connect card in the pew back in front of you. Take just a moment to fill that out. We'd love to get some information about you and, of course, follow up with you. Uh, we'd love to see you as a regular attender at the church that we call our family the Rock Church family. Would you give God praise for the guests, for the visitors that we have here today? Thank you for joining us. All of those watching by way of Facebook, YouTube, we welcome you into the service as well. We're excited in this time of the year. This is the harvest season. Touch your neighbor and say, this is the season of harvest. And we're anticipating, expecting great things to happen. God is on the throne. Nothing has changed People change, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, the enemy may be fighting us and coming against us, but yet God is aware of all the things the enemy has thrown against us. In fact, I was just thinking a moment ago, the Lord's always a step ahead of the enemy. Amen. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have a message today that God has given me. I honestly believe that this message has a prophetic edge to it. You'll hear it in just a few moments. But I will tell you this, that there's a dream that God gave me that is connected to the message this morning. I'm going to be sharing that dream with you. But I believe that that dream is going to touch some people's hearts because I believe that dream was about you. Touch your neighbor and say it's about me. Amen. Hey, listen, folks. We're in the last of the last days. And... uh I guess I qualify in that old man category now because I'm having dreams. You know? But God's good, isn't he? And he's available for us. Please, as Brother Lawan said a moment ago, please pray for my wife. She had a very tough night last night. In fact, she was in so much pain last night, she contemplated calling 911. She didn't wake me up, she would, but she was up about 2 o'clock this morning. And tremendous pain and uh and i want you to lift her up today my my daughter's going to be with her this morning to check on her uh but please lift her up sister uh faye as we mentioned a moment ago she has also been in tremendous pain uh from an ovarian cyst that's grown really large and we just want you to believe god not speak anything but faith everybody say faith and we're going to speak faith over sister uh faye as well this morning I, I believe, don't you? I believe. Uh, I got a call. Uh, I was coming back from Florence. I'd been visiting Brother Lindsay, and 
Sister Samantha Locklear called me and just gave me a praise report and said, it's all gone. The cancer's gone. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful praise report. But, you know, I, I'd already felt it when we prayed for her. I, I felt it. I felt it just as much as I'm standing here. And she said when they discovered the cancer on her liver, it was already dead. Would you give God praise? It was already dead. God's able to kill cancer cells. Amen. We're so thankful to have you here today. You're our VIP. No matter who you are today, you're very important to us. And we're so glad to have you with us. We're going to ask our ushers to come forward. I want to give you another updated report uh, from last week. I received an offering last week. Uh, you may remember that we had given uh, $1,000 uh, for Bibles for China. I uh, contacted Dr. Hong Yang, and I said, you know, after watching that film, I said, we're going to give more money <laughs> for Bibles. And uh, you gave an additional over $2,000 last week for Bibles for China. Uh, so thank God for over $3,000 for Bibles to go out into the harvest. Would you give God praise? Thank you so much for your response. Let's stand together. We're going to put our declaration of tithe and offering on the screen. Are you excited about what God is doing, what the Lord is doing in the midst of the chaos, <laughs> in the midst of the confusion and all the political division and all the problems that our nation is facing? We're having an economic crisis, social, political, cultural but in the midst of it all, God is still at work. How many believe he's protecting you? Amen. I hope you don't mind me sharing this, Tony, but God protected Brother Tony this week. Somebody was in a drive-by shooting and shot through his truck. He said, if I'd been in my sleeper, I'd been dead. He said, if I'd been a second earlier or later, I'd have been dead. He said, but God. <laughs> Hallelujah. A nine millimeter went right in through his truck. Brother Tony, he's got you in the palm of his hand. Hallelujah. I think that's something to praise the Lord for. He's watching out for us. He said, I never saw anything. But he heard the sound of the shot. Folks, every time you walk out your door, you better be praying for God's covering. Touch your neighbor and say, pray for God's covering. Let's say this together. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, I will declare the decree today that the Lord has promised to me. You're my sons and daughters. I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give to you your inheritance and the keys to the kingdom. I'm the head and not the tail. I will receive overflowing blessings. For I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. I'm highly favored by the Lord. I receive supernatural increase from the righteousness of God. I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will give and it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give into my bosom. I will walk in divine favor. I'm the apple of his eye. He has crowned me with loving kindness. I affirm and declare this day that I will be a cheerful giver. And I will receive these blessings so you may open the window of heaven and pour out for me blessings that will not be room enough to receive them. In Jesus' name, amen.
satisfied with the way that he cares for me and how he makes a way when there seems to be no hope for me and yes I'm satisfied with the joy he placed within my soul and oh and how he helps me to bear, to bear my heavy load. I am. I am so satisfied. Yes. So satisfied with my Savior. He brings more to me
Would you give it up for this choir and this, these musicians, our praise team, Sister Terry, everybody. Boy, isn't God good? Let's give him praise. I want to be satisfied with him. You know, when you're satisfied with him, you don't start looking other places. <laughs> the problem is we've got too many people that are unsatisfied, and they're, they're looking in the wrong direction to find satisfaction. You know, I, I'm old enough to remember the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> I know that's way before some of you remember. But you know, the whole world is looking for some kind of satisfaction. But they can't get no satisfaction outside of Jesus. He's the only one that satisfies. Would you give God praise? God is so good, isn't he? I'm glad to have you with us today. Again, we are so appreciative of your attendance. It's been a busy week uh, for the church in terms of pastoral needs. A lot of people in the hospital, sick, a lot of different situations going on all at one time. But God is aware. God sees. He knows exactly where you are, what you're going through. And a lot of things that happen uh, we're not even aware of because you don't always share all of your needs. But here's the great point. Irregardless of whether you share with the congregation or not, God is aware of exactly what you're going through. Can you give God praise that he's aware? I've already given you a bit of an introduction uh, to what I'm going to share, not, of course, the thought, but kind of the direction I feel the Holy Spirit leading today. I'm going to share a few verses of Scripture from the book of Deuteronomy, verses that I've shared in the past, but I'm going in a different direction with it this morning. Let's stand together as we honor the Word of the Lord. If you don't have your Bibles with you, it's on the screen. Beginning in verse 1 of chapter 2 of the book of Deuteronomy. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we encompassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. Would you say amen? amen? God bless you. You may be reseated. I want to share a message with you entitled Spiritual Stagnation. Spiritual Stagnation. Stagnation defined is the state of not flowing, not moving. A situation in which something stays the same and does not grow and does not develop. Anybody ever heard of being stagnant? There's nothing happening <laughs> when you're stagnant. It's everything is standing still, just right where it's at. And when that happens, when you don't have fresh flow of water, the water becomes stagnant and undrinkable after a while. Church, I was out walking in my neighborhood recently, and I was walking, and while I was walking, this thought, the title of our message, just fell into my spirit, 
and these words, spiritual stagnation. Church, we have just climbed a great mountain. We have just had a great victory. But you know one of the most dangerous places in your spiritual walk is when you have experienced a great victory? You remember Elijah winning the battle on Mount Carmel. And afterwards, he fell into great depression. In fact, he heard that Jezebel was out to kill him. And he just said, I just want to die. Just take me on, God. Church, be careful that you don't allow the enemy to drop you into the abyss of depression right after great victory. How many know we've had a great victory? And we need to celebrate that. But we can't afford to circle that mountain too long. Why? Because we might get stagnant. We might get satisfied with the wrong stuff. <laughs> I believe that God gave me the dream I'm about to share because of the thought he gave me. The very day that I had this thought. During the night, I had a dream. We all have dreams. <laughs> they don't always mean anything. <laughs> As one person said, it might have been the pizza you ate. <laughs> it might be your indigestion. <laughs> it may have nothing to do with anything spiritual. But after I had this dream, and it's a strange dream, but I believe God gave me the interpretation. In my dream, early in the hours of a Sunday morning, I woke up a little after 3.30 in the morning. And I contemplated the meaning of the dream. And in this dream, I was collecting rare species. Species of insects, of animals that were very rare, and I was collecting them. And I was putting them in bags. <clears throat> Excuse me. And after collecting these species, I had captured a very odd looking species. It was hard to describe. It had characteristics of a bird, and yet I knew that it was an insect. It had a beak like a bird. And it had other features like an insect. I've never seen one. I don't think one exists. If it does, I've never seen it. But I was bringing this particular species to be sold to a dealer. And I walked into this place with this rare species. And when I showed this bird-insect hybrid to this shop owner, their response was to act as if it were common, as if it was not rare. And in my dream, I knew exactly what I had found, and I knew how special it was. But they didn't want to pay me what it was worth. 
they wanted me to give it to them. And in my spirit, I knew that if I let them have it, they wouldn't even take care of it. And something inside of me says, just let it go free. Release it back. I woke up from that dream, and I started thinking, what does this dream mean? How is this dream significant? And I believe that God gave me a word for you. I'm talking about you, every person that's here. You see, what the Lord allowed me to understand is that Satan has come to some of you and he has challenged you. He has tested you because you don't know who you are. You don't know how special you are. You don't know how rare the gifts are that you possess. And the devil is trying to steal your value. He wants you to believe that you're worthless. He wants you to believe that you're less than what God says you are. Now, there was another aspect of the dream that I need you to understand. This creature that I had was a very fragile and a very delicate creature. And what I'm going to share with you is this. Some of you, you're very breakable. You're very fragile. It doesn't take much to hurt you. It doesn't take much for you to kind of go into your little cocoon because you're fragile. You're fragile in your feelings, in your emotions. It doesn't take but one word to hurt you. It doesn't take but one snide remark to set you into a place of depression. But the Spirit of God wants you to know that you are valuable. That there's nobody else like you. And the devil doesn't want you to be free from those who want to denigrate you and people that want to devalue you. And I believe that the devil wants to strangle you. That he wants to cut off your possibilities. That he wants to imprison you in your fear and your doubt and your depression. Because he knows that if you get out and if you get free and you go back to your environment, there you will produce. There you will be able to fly. There you'll be able to go where you've never gone before. And this creature was a hybrid. Insects generally crawl, but birds fly. (laughs) 
Some of you are in the development stage, and that's why I saw the bird features. But you're behaving like an insect. I feel this church. I'm, I'm telling you, this is from God. And you've been crawling around on your belly. And God is saying, it's time for you to transform. You've been limiting yourself to what everybody else has said about you. And you have believed their lies. At 65, I've traded cars a few times, just a few. <laughs> and generally, when you go to trade it in, it ain't never worth <laughs> what you know it's worth. <laughs> They're always looking for the flaws. Why, we ain't giving you this much money for your trade in. It's not worth, but this is what the book says it's worth. But you know what it's worth. And you know what you're worth. But the devil's trying to steal you. He's trying to lowball your price. You're called to fly. You're called to soar. You're called to be an eagle, but you've got a chicken mentality. And you know what you are? You're stagnant. You're stuck. Stuck believing the lies of Satan. And God is ready to release you from his hand. But some of you are too fragile. Touch your neighbor said, you're not developed yet. And I'm warning you, Satan makes bids on the undeveloped. He's a poacher. He's a thief. He's a liar. And he'll steal the egg from the nest and suck it dry. Church, wake up. God has called you to something greater than you've ever been in your life. But some things God will not reveal to you until you're ready for it. What are you saying, Pastor? Some of you need to take some steps in order to grow. You see, freedom is worth more than money. You see, freedom costs you. You see, in my dream, the feelings were heart heartbreaking. You see, some of you are being held captive by your thoughts and your fears. But listen, your value is stowed up in your freedom. Everybody say, my value is in my freedom. You shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. How many believe that God wants us to live in freedom? The key, is everybody with me? 
I've been slow on purpose. The key to breaking the assignment of Satan against you is revelation, warfare, and change of direction. Everybody say revelation, warfare, change of direction. The first part of this equation is happening this morning. God is telling you through revelation, through the dream that he gave me for you. You see, I know when God gives me a dream for me. This dream was not for me. This dream, oh my gosh, was for our church. This dream was for you. Some of you are in the process, but Satan is trying to kill the process of your change. He wants you stuck at a place that is not rightfully your place. Mount Seir was not the place for the children of Israel. It was the inheritance that was already allocated for the Edomites, for the descendants of Esau. This was not their property. God said, I'm not giving you this mountain. I've got something better. Some of you, or settling for less than what is rightfully yours. And the reason that many of you are is because you lack direction and you lack revelation. Does this make sense? If the devil can stop the flow of our church, if the devil can get us to get satisfied with where we are and not move onward, souls will be lost. And the church will remain in a neophyte stage. How many want to grow? How many want to spiritually grow? I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm going to take my time. If I don't finish this message, it's not important. But I've got a word. Oh, I feel it. You know when you've been targeted. How many know when you've been targeted? Some of you, the only way you're going to move forward is you've got to reject where you are. Thomas Edison, the American inventor and entrepreneur, said restlessness and discontent are the first necessities of progress. You can't change a situation that you're comfortable with. As a pastor, Brother Leonard, what I see, there are too many people that are comfortable in their dysfunction. You're not growing. You're not gaining ground. You're not maturing as a Christian. You're stuck. You're becoming stagnant, lifeless, and the devil's sitting back applauding because he knows you're stuck. And he knows you're no, no threat to him whatsoever because of your spiritual immaturity. Everybody say, I've got to reject what I'm comfortable with. It's not easy, 
because we like being comfortable. It's not easy to move, but we've got to. Listen. He says, turn you northward. <laughs> you know, when you become a person that is always rejecting change, after a while, it develops into hardness. And that's a dangerous place to be. If you're on your job and you can't accept any changes, any innovation, after a while you're going to be replaced. Because the boss man's going to say, I can't work with that guy. They're not willing to change. And I know not all change is for the good, but church when it comes to God, we have to have our spiritual antenna up so that when the wind changes direction, when God says you're going south, you need to go north, we need to hear the voice of God. Don't put up. With being down. Some of you have been down so long, you begin to believe you can't rise again. But I want to tell you that your history doesn't have to be a reflection of your future. Where you've been has nothing to do as to where you're going. I may have been a slave in Egypt. <laughs> But I've been called to the promised land. Would somebody give God some praise? It's time to get up and get out of my situation. Well, your daddy was an alcoholic. Your mother, you know what kind of woman she was. I'm not bound by my past because I've got a brand new future. Would you give God some praise? I've got a brand new future because of who I'm walking with and who I'm talking with. Don't try to define me by who I used to be because I am who he says I am. Would you give him some praise in the house of God? You know what? Satan will convince you, if you let him, that it's your destiny to suffer. I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings here, but you know why some people won't change? Because they like the sympathy they're getting with the afflictions that they have. They love the attention. I'm not changing. My check might not come. <laughs> Church, I don't want to be bound. I don't want to be in chains to any affliction. I don't want the devil to have one word to say about my future because I am his and he is mine. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ and everything you see and everything that you want is in him. Hallelujah. The devil's crowd don't have anything I want. Listen, I had that stuff a long time ago. 
It does not satisfy. You know what? I'm going to tell you to do something that you may not hear me tell you to do again. But I'm going to tell you this morning to get angry. Yeah. I'm not talking about angry at one another or angry at me. (laughs) But you need to get angry at your situation. I wish we had some angry people in the house. I'm talking about mad at the devil for binding you, for convincing you that you're worth nothing, for telling you that you can't do what God said you can do. Get mad at the devil and say, I'm not going to take it anymore. You know why some people are afraid of taking a step? Bless their little heart, they're afraid of failure. If I step out there, I might drown. I might fail. The paraplegic was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Everybody say there's a time factor involved. But on one fateful day, Jesus came by the pool of Bethesda and said to him, Wilt thou be made whole? At first, he objected. I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. I'm always a day late, a dollar short. It never works out for me. I'll fail. I won't try anymore. I feel this is God. I'm going to go with it. Some of you have told yourself you're not going to try anymore. You've tried to serve God. You keep falling flat on your face and the devil's sitting back laughing. I'm telling you, get up. Brush yourself off. The Lord is the one who will make you whole. I don't care how long you've been waiting at the pool. Touch your neighbor and say it's a new season. It's a new time. It's not just when the angel comes down, troubles the waters. He's a now Lord. (laughs) Somebody say he's, he's on time. Can I go further? Stop dwelling on what you don't have. This is a temptation. I'm talking to somebody in the house. The enemy will make you look across your yard and you'll see all the toys that your neighbors got and you'll scratch your head and say, how in the world can they afford it? I know where they're working at. I know what kind of money they're making. How they got all this stuff and I can't even afford hardly to keep my lights on. And the devil will have you worrying yourself to death over what you don't have. I'm telling you to let it go. I'm telling you to release it. I'm telling you don't let the devil beat you up with what other folks have. God is the God of abundance. He is the God of all creation. All he has to do is speak it and it'll materialize. You see, we're getting angry for the wrong reasons. I want you to start defending yourself against these toxic influences. Everybody say they're poisonous. They will destroy you. Can I go a little further? Stay away 
from the blamers and the complainers. You're going to hear people going to talk about your pastor. And they're going to tell you all the things your pastor doesn't do. <laughs> what he should be doing. What he isn't doing. What he could be doing. And he's not doing. And if you listen to it, you're going to be poisoned. Because if you're looking for faults, you're going to find them. And I got plenty of them. <laughs> but if you stay in that cesspool, that stagnant water of complaint and bitterness, the only person it's going to ultimately hurt is you. You are going to poison your system. You are going to poison your relationship with Jesus. Don't you let the devil come along and beat you up. Don't you allow the devil to lie to you. And he will lie to you. Can I go further? <laughs> Limit yourself from what I would like to term the sensationalized and the negative influences. Cut that TV off. Stop looking at that page on Facebook. Turn the page. Do you hear what I'm saying? Cut the radio off. I don't care what it is that's feeding your spirit negative thoughts. You turn it off. Don't listen to it. Don't become it. You watch it long enough and you become what you watch. Can somebody say, ouch. ouch? It's time to change the spiritual channel. All I'm hearing is the buzzing sound. It's spiritual stagnation. Can I get real? I don't listen to every preacher. Oh, I don't have to receive that lie. If it don't mesh, come in line with, affirm the written, primordial, classical revelation of God through his word. It's not right. Reject it for what it is. It is a lie straight out of the pit of hell. Stop listening, feeding yourself with spiritual garbage. God will affirm through your spiritual man or woman what's right and what's wrong. Well, that didn't sound right. I heard that, but it didn't resonate. It didn't sound right. Check it against the Word. Would you give God praise? Check it against the Word. Associate with people who will encourage you, and who will lift your spirit. Associate with godly people, with people that are living lives of spiritual integrity. Associate with people where the water's flowing, <laughs> and you feel it. 
and he touches you. And you know that that person knows Jesus. I called to check on my brother who had a massive stroke. He's blind now. He can only have a partial vision. We were talking on the phone about Jesus. The Spirit of God hit me. And a heavenly language started flowing. And my brother shouted on the other end of the line. He said, I felt that all the way here. I want to tell you, church, there's no distance with the Holy Ghost. I don't care if your child is in California. I don't care if they're stationed overseas. I don't care if they're hiding somewhere in a, in a bunker somewhere. I'm telling you that Jesus is able to touch them and help them wherever they are. Hallelujah. There's no distance in prayer. Woo! I don't want to get stagnant. And if I let some people in this church whisper in my ear long enough, I won't be good for anything. Be careful who you let speak over your life. I want to go a little further. Rebuke and flush out Every demon of impossibility in the name of Jesus. The devil's going to tell you it's impossible for your situation to change. But I'm telling you that with God, all things are possible. Would you put your hands together? All things are possible. Stop playing funeral marches at what should be your parade. <laughs> I don't know if I should share this or not. I don't know who might be watching on Facebook. <laughs> I'll just put it this way. And it wasn't this church. But I was working with a minister of music. We'd have me preaching and God moving. And we'd have an altar service and they'd kill it every time. With dead music. There's a place for a funeral. And there's a place for a celebration. And this is the place for a celebration. Church, we're here to have church this morning. We're here to celebrate. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus. We're here to worship the King of Kings. We're here to find every power of hell and darkness. We're here to speak power in Jesus' name. Why don't you come up out of that deadness and be resurrected in the power of Jesus' name? Somebody get happy. Somebody get happy this morning. God didn't create you to become stagnant. You can rise higher. You can grow bigger, stronger, more anointed if you'll just believe. Isaiah 5, 13 says, Therefore my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Church, listen to me. The devil doesn't want you to have this revelation this morning. The devil wanted to rob it from you. The devil didn't want you to hear this word. The devil wanted you to stay in that neophyte stage. He wanted you to believe the lie. But you know now that he's a liar. And you're special. And you're gifted. And you're one of a kind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
touch your neighbor and say, stop being so fragile. <laughs> Without a raise of hand, how many of you have ever been in management? If you have, you've got to have tough skin. Go, <laughs> you're going to get talked about. <laughs> you'll get run down by the rank and file. <laughs> Because they, number one, they don't like you because you are management sometimes. Sometimes. And other times, they're not going to agree with your decision. God has not called us to win a popularity contest. God has called us to be unique. God has called us to be different. God has called us to be a holy nation, a royal priesthood. God has called us to be peculiar creatures. God has called us out to be change agents. Would you lift up your hands and say, God, I'm a candidate to be different. Yeah. Say it to yourself. I'm unique. I'm special. I'm bought. What a wonderful price. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Would you give God some praise if you know who you are? <laughs> Woo! God just laid this in my spirit. Some of you listen to me. The devil's been planting a seed in your brain to resign, to quit. Some of you to quit your positions right here. I'm telling you, stop listening to his lies. You're being more effective than you realize. If you weren't being effective, he wouldn't be trying to get you out of your position. If you weren't where you needed to be, he'd be leaving you alone. But he knows you are where you're supposed to be. And he's trying his best to get you discouraged so you'll walk away. And I got another word. He said that also has to do with some of you on the job you're at. Church, I, I better stop. I'm going to jump ahead in my message. Some of you are fighting the wrong problems. You're not fighting the problems that you're supposed to be fighting. And that's why you're not winning. Because the devil has you chasing a rabbit scent when well, you're supposed to be hunting deer. <laughs> Rebecca, Isaac's wife. Let's go Old Testament. She's having a problem in her pregnancy, ladies, that she didn't understand because Brother Leonard, this was the days before ultrasound. <laughs> she didn't know what was going on. But something was going on in her womb. And she prayed and said, God, what is happening in this pregnancy? I'm having a horrible time. And church, if you want to identify your problem this morning... If you'll pray to God, he'll show you what your problem is. He'll identify the devil that you're dealing with. God said the reason, Rebecca, you're having this problem in your pregnancy is because there's two nations fighting within your belly. 
Esau and Jacob were already wrestling to see who was going to be the first. Do you hear what I'm saying, church? There's things going on in the spirit realm that you need discernment, and God will give you discernment if you'll pray, if you'll ask God. He'll show you the root cause of the problem you're having. I don't understand, Pastor. I've been feeling so uneasy lately. I don't understand. I've been feeling this foreboding feeling. I, I've been feeling this spirit of fear. I, I've been feeling this depression. What's going on? You're under demonic attack. That's what's going on. And you need to pray. And you need to ask God the root cause. Church, listen to me very carefully. Sometimes there are things that you've left remaining in your life that you need to get rid of because Satan is using that as a stronghold. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? It might be a habit. It might be a sin. It might be a past bitterness or relationship, unforgiveness. It might even be an idol in your life. But church, you don't need to let anything, I said anything, separate you from the will of God for your life. You don't need to allow the enemy to be able to use any tool, any weapon to destroy you, to destroy your family, to destroy your relationship. But pastor, they're just a friend on Facebook. No, they're not. They've been sent on assignment by the devil to try to stir up some old feelings and some old passions in you. And I'm telling you right now that you need to cut it off. Oh, preacher, I wish you wouldn't have said that. Starve it, church. Starve it. Cut it off. Don't feed it. The devil will attack your mind. Everybody say, my mind. There are some things you need to deconstruct and reconstruct in your mind. Do you hear what I'm saying? Casting down every imagination that exalted itself against the name of Christ and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Would everybody say 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your mind. Learn it. Quote it. Begin, begin to rely on it because it's food for you. I'm casting it down. Somebody say, I'm taking authority. Somebody give him praise. I'm going to move on. Israel had a mindset of we can't. We can't. How many know that we can? But if we, you keep saying we can't long enough, <laughs> you'll start believing you can't. Repentance and reconciliation are the keys to complete liberty and spiritual growth. You can only avenge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Sin and your life will disqualify you from being able to receive everything that God has for you. If there's sin in your life, the first thing you've got to do is confess and repent. It's time to come clean. Let's stand together. I'm not going to keep preaching. Church, when you find out what your problem is, don't negotiate with it. Don't try to settle with it. Assassinate it. Kill it. Destroy it. You can't play patty cake with the devil. When you find out, and you will, 
what that stronghold is. Get you some spiritual dynamite <laughs> and blow it to smithereens. <laughs> Everybody say there's power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Let's give God praise in the name of Jesus. I don't know what's damming up your spiritual flow. But get it out of the stream. Everybody say, let the stream flow. Your healing is in the stream. Your victory is in the stream. Your anointing is in the stream. How many know that God has something for you in that stream, that that wonderful stream of His grace, His power, His love, His mercy. I feel the flow this morning of a mighty river, a river of God's grace and power and mercy. While heads are bowed, eyes are closed. How many today want to reach a new level, a whole new level in Jesus? You want to get closer to Him. Have more of Him. Experience more of Him. Can I see your hand go up? Hands are going up all over the building. Thank God. Church, here's what I want you to do. Every person that raised your hand, I want you to come and stand down front. This is going to be our closing prayer this morning. If you'll come and stand, please. Church, you may need to go back and listen to this message again. The reason I say that is because sometimes in a message, as long as my message has been this morning, you forget some of the earlier points. But I believe God has given us an instruction guide today to help us to recognize the tactics the ploys, the devices of our enemy, Satan. How many want us to go on to a greater height? I mean our church. Church, I'm so thankful. You just don't know. I'm so thankful for what God has done. But we can't rest on our laurels. Jesus is about to come back. Thank God for your sacrifices, and you're going to be rewarded. You listen to me. You're going to be rewarded for your sacrifice, small or large. But we've encompassed this mountain long enough. It's time to move on to the promises. I want your children saved. I want your grandchildren saved. I want your siblings saved. I want your parents saved. I want your neighbors saved. I want this community saved. I want Robinson County to have revival. I want us to be a key. But we've got to understand who we are. And we've got to stop crawling around church when God has called us to fly. Let's give God praise. He's called us to fly. Church, I didn't share this part of the dream. But this little fragile creature that I had in my hand had a beak like a bird. And when I was taking it to that shop to sell it, with what little that it had, it was hitting me on the hand with that beak. It was trying to escape with what weapon it had. Church, listen to me. Some of you, the devil's got you. At least it feels like he does. But there's no weapon that's been formed against you that's going to prosper. You're going to be released. You're coming out because God has not finished what he wants to perfect in your life. 
you're stronger. Touch your neighbor and say, you're stronger than what you think you are. God is here, church, this morning, I'm telling you. And he has spoken. And you're rare. And you're special. And you're blessed. And you're anointing and the devil's telling you that you don't have anything. Because he knows what you do have. And once you recognize who you are and what you have at your disposal, there's no limit on what God is going to do in your life. Would you put your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you? Heavenly Father, we pray one for the other. God, I pray for our people. I pray for our church family. I pray, God.